another session of analytical geometry this is part 7 in this video we are going to discuss few very good questions in the diagram PRST is a trapezium PT parallel RS angle PEF is theta all the informations are there on the diagram as well question a write down the equation of PR look at the line PR we don't have the coordinates of P but we have another two point C and R we find that the y coordinate is 5 for C as well as for R therefore we realize that PR is parallel to the x-axis and the equation of PR must be y equal to 5. Question B. Calculate the gradient of RS. We have the point R and S. Nothing new. We take the formula from the information sheet. Substitute and use the calculator to get gradient of RS, MRS equal to 2. Question C. Calculate the size of angle theta. Look at the angle theta. Angle theta is between the x-axis and the line PT. And we have learned the inclination of a straight line. But unfortunately, we don't have the gradient of PT. The point P is not available. Then we look for another option. Look at RS. RS is parallel to PT, given in the question. Therefore, we can use the gradient of RS. Gradient of PT is the same as gradient of RS, which is equal to 2. We have already calculated. Therefore, we write tan theta equal to 2. Therefore, theta is second function tan 2. That is 63,43 degree. Question D. Calculate the coordinates of D. D is on the y-axis as well as on the line RS. The x-coordinate of D is very clear. It will be 0. But what about the y coordinate? We have to calculate the equation of RS. The gradient is 2. We use one po point on RS. We get the equation of RS. y equal to 2x minus 1. Substituting x equal to 0, we can calculate y. So y is equal to minus 1. The coordinates of d is 0 minus Another question, ABCD is a parallelogram. All the vertices are available. AE is perpendicular to BC. Question A, calculate the length of BC. Nothing new here. The distance formula, what is the distance formula? On the formula sheet, root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. We use the coordinates of B and C, carefully substitute and use the calculator. The length of BC is 5 root 5. Determine the value of K. K is the X coordinate of D. And now A is available. BC is parallel to AD, that is given because ABCD is a parallelogram. The length of BC is already calculated in the previous question. So the length of AD also must be equal to 5 root 5. And that is the length of AD. We use the formula, okay. we substitute the coordinates of A and D carefully 
then squaring both sides we get 5 root 5 square equal to k minus 0 square plus 6 minus 1 whole square 5 root 5 square is 125 then we have k square plus 25 on the right hand side solving for k k square is 100 therefore k is plus or minus 10 but we know that the k cannot be negative okay it's not negative so k is equal to positive 10. now question c determine the equation of ae it is given that ae is perpendicular to bc equation of a line we need the gradient and at least one point point is available a01 now the gradient how to get the gradient of ae we make use of the given information ae is perpendicular to bc so we calculate the gradient of bc first we get half gradient of bc is half therefore the gradient of the perpendicular line is minus one divided by half which gives us minus two now we can write the equation equation of ae y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1 substitute and modify the equation y equal to minus 2x plus 1 here is another good question we have the triangle abc then we have three angles alpha beta and theta in the question our question a is determine the length of ac nothing new we use the formula for the length substitute and use the calculator we get root of 153 or 12,37 now question b determine the equation of line bc once we have the gradient the equation is very simple gradient is calculated we get minus 4 over 3 and then equation of bc using the formula for the straight line we substitute very carefully and make y as the subject okay so we get y equal to minus 4 over 3x plus 22 over 3. Determine angle A, B, C. That is angle theta. So we have three angles here. Alpha, beta and theta. M, B, C is minus 4 over 3. Therefore we can calculate angle alpha. The inclination tan alpha equal to minus 4 over 3 therefore alpha is equal to 180 minus reference angle gives us 126,9 degree when we take the reference angle do not use the negative side use only positive number again MAB is 5 over 6 tan beta is 5 over 6 therefore beta is equal to 39,8 degree so we have alpha and beta using the exterior angle property of triangle we calculate theta is equal to alpha minus beta which is equal to 87,8 one degree meaning angle abc equal to 87 comma one degree. question d determine the midpoint p of ab ab so there is nothing new we get the formula from the formula sheet and substitute very carefully we get 
minus 2 and 7 over 2. Question E. Determine the equation of the line parallel to AC. So we touch another question of parallel lines here. Passing through minus 1, 3. Parallel to AC. So we calculate the gradient of AC. That is negative 1 over 4. Then the new line is passing through minus 1, 3. And also it is parallel to AC. So the equation of the parallel line passing through minus 1, 3. The same gradient. Y minus 3 equal to minus 1 over 4 times x plus 1. Modifying the equation. We get y equal to minus 1 over 4x plus 11 over 4. Question F. Show that AB is perpendicular to 6x plus 5y equal to 18. So we have done many questions like this. How to prove? Two lines are perpendicular. It depends on the gradients. So we have M of AB that is 5 over 6. Now the second equation is 6x plus 5y equal to 18. From there we get the gradient of that line. Modify the equation. Make y as the subject. Look at the gradient. The gradient is minus 6 over 5. So that is the gradient. We multiply these two gradients and you will see that it is going to be equal to minus 1. Once the product is minus 1, what we conclude? The two lines are perpendicular. Another good question from analytical geometry. In the diagram below, ABCD is a parallelogram. The diagram is very clear. Calculate the coordinates of M, the midpoint of DB. Coordinates, X coordinate and Y coordinate of M. So M is the midpoint of the diagonal. We use the midpoint formula. We get 5 over 2, 0. We repeat these type of questions again and again. Hence or otherwise, calculate the values of X and Y. Now we have X as the X coordinate of A y as the y coordinate of c okay and the midpoint is now available 5 over 2 0 so we make use of the midpoint formula x plus h over 2 is equal to 5 over 2 solving for x we get x equal to minus 3. 6 plus y over 2 is 0. Solving for y, we get y is equal to negative 6. Okay, good question. Determine angle theta. Okay, we have done questions like this. So we go for angle beta and alpha. Gradient of AD is the same as gradient of BC, which is equal to 4 because ABCD is a parallel. Therefore, angle beta, the inclination, tan inverse 4, we get 75,96 on the calculator. Again, we go for angle alpha. Gradient of AB is calculated. That is minus 2 over 3. Therefore, angle alpha is tan inverse of minus 2 over 3. Remember that when we take the reference angle, we don't use the negative sign. 
180 minus reference angle gives us 146,31. Also, you must notice that it is an obtuse angle, more than 90 degree angle. Therefore, theta is equal to alpha minus beta. What is the reason? Exterior angle equal to sum of interior opposite angle. So we get angle theta here, 70 comma 3. That is part 7 of analytical geometry. We did few good questions. Hope you are learning the methods. Okay.